Hi guys, so here we have a linear regression problem which has four features and it says that the following weight vectors produce an equal amount of mean squared error, right? So what is a mean squared error? The mean squared error is given by the average of the individual loss functions, right? So W transpose xi minus yi squared and then you take the average, right? And this will vary from 1 to n for all the data points, right? This is the average square error or the mean square error. And it says it produces an equal amount of this, right? So, so this will be same as 1 by n times summation i running from 1 to n w so if i call the first one w1 transpose xi the second one would be w2 transpose xi minus yi whole square and so on right so it is the same for every w i now it says which of the weight vector is likely to be chosen by ridge regression so let's recall that in ridge regression uh, the parameter which optimizes the ridge regression is given by the minimizer of minimizer along w okay or I, I think i should write arg min right the argument which minimizes and what is the loss function given by it's nothing but sum over of the individual loss functions right plus some constant let's say lambda times the norm of w square right and since it is given that the mean square is the same that means the sum of the loss function is also the same for every wi, right? If that is the same for every wi, then the ridge regression would select that particular w for which this term, the second term is minimum, right? So what do we have? We have that the ridge regression will prefer that wi for which wi norm squared right is minimum because the first part is the same for all of them right so so this is the loss part right loss part is the same for all wi so let's compute the norm of each uh, wi the first one it would be 4 plus 4 plus 9 which is 9 plus 1 which is 18 right and then uh, we have 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 1 which is 12 and then we have 9 plus 4 plus 16 plus 1 which is 30 and then 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 which is 7 right so what are these these are nothing but wi norm squared right and which one is the minimum w4 has the minimum norm square of 7 right so which one will be chosen by ridge regression so w hat ridge will be equal to w4 okay Now we have uh, a variant of the previous question where the mean squared error is not the same for all wi but it's different and it's also given right. Now the question is that which of the following vectors will be selected as the final weight vector by ridge regression right. So uh, the loss function remains the same right. So the loss function would be summation of w transpose xi minus yi squared plus lambda times norm of w squared right i running from 1 to n but there is some additional information given it says the value of theta is 13 right and it's also given that the norm of w square is constrained by theta right so for that we need to write the equivalent representation of this minimization problem so this is the minimization problem that we originally have right and we have an equivalent criteria so which means that this is same as saying this is same as selecting right the minimization of summation i running from 1 to n w transpose x minus y i squared subject to subject to the criteria that norm of w square is less than or equal to theta right or and theta is given to be 13 right so what does this says and and both of these conditions this is so you can think of this as problem 1 and this as problem 2 so essentially both the problems 
will give you the same w star okay or w hat r right the 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 value of w which minimi which solves one will be same as the value of w which solves two that is the idea right if you require a proof of that you can let me know in the comments down below now uh, since we have that so how do we uh, select the wi we will use the second condition right now uh, let us compute so we know that we want the norm square of w to be less than or equal to 13 right now uh, from the previous uh, question we know the norm square of wi for each of them right the first one is 18 and then we have 12 and then 30 and then 7 right and out of these we can observe that the third one and the first one have got norm bigger than 13 right so this is bigger than 13 and this is also bigger than 13 so we will not consider w3 and w1 right so out of the remaining which is w2 and w4 we will choose the one which has the least mean squared error right so the step is like this the in the first step uh, reject all wis wis which have the norm which have norm wi square bigger than 13 right and next choose that wi for which summation w transpose x minus yi or xi norms squared i running from 1 to n this is minimum now th now we know that uh, mean square for the so this is same as saying that uh, instead of the sum of the loss function you can also take the average of the loss functions right because if the sum is minimum then the average will also be minimum so as per this we know that w trans w2 has a mean square error of 5 and w4 has a mean square error of 9 so we will prefer w2 right so the correct answer is w2 so here we have a question on subgradients the question goes like this it asks if the points for a given function has got one subgradient or many right so uh, before proceeding with the question the sum fact which we need to know which is that uh, if if a function if f is differentiable if f is differentiable at a point a right which is again a real value so if a, f is differentiable at a then it has then it has one subgradient right subgradient else many so this is the fact that we will use to solve this question right now uh, one easy thing about the question is that the graph of the function is already given right so from the graph we can observe that at a1 the function is differentiable right so uh, we know that this is actually a piecewise uh, continuous function in fact a piecewise differentiable function because each of the individual functions x square 2x and 4x minus 4 all of them are differentiable individually right so the only points where the function y can be non-differentiable are the points 0 and 2 right so at 0 we notice that there is a kink so this is a kink and at 4 also we notice that there is a kink right so whenever there is a kink we can say that it is not differentiable so it will have many subgradients right so at a2 and a4 will have many subgradients and a1 and a3 will have only one subgradient which means the third option so the third option is the correct option now uh, suppose let's say that we are not given the graph right even in that case we can determine if the function uh, if the function has many subgradients or only few or only one at uh, any point right how we how do we do that we need to check if f is differentiable right so we need to check for points x equal to or a equal to 0 
and a equal to 2 because that is where the function is changing right because otherwise the individual functions are differentiable everywhere so let's check it a is equal to 0 uh, so we will use this definition of uh, differentiability which says that we need to take the limit of x going to a fx minus fa by x minus a so this is what we will evaluate right now let's first let's do that for a equal to 0 right so limit x going to 0 fx is so let me let me take the left hand limit right for the left hand limit we have x square minus 0 by x minus 0 which is equal to limit x tending to 0 minus x which is 0 now if I take the right hand limit at 0 it would be 2x minus 0 by x minus 0 which is nothing but 2 right so the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit which means f is not differentiable at a equal to 2 or oh sorry a equal to 0 that means it has many subgradients now let us also evaluate it at a is equal to 2 right so we are doing this assuming that the graph is not given to us okay now again I'll take limit x going to 2 from the left hand side right in that case it would be uh, 2x minus 2 times 2 which is 4 divided by x minus 2 this will be equal to 2 times x minus 2 by x minus 2 it will get cancelled because 2 is x is different from 2 now the limit will be equal to 2 right now if you evaluate the right hand limit it would be 4x minus 4 minus 4 times 2 minus 4 which is 8 minus 4 which is 4 divided by x minus 2 now this is equal to limit x going to 2 plus 4x minus 8 which is 4 times x minus 4x minus 8 which is 4 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 right now again this will get cancelled and the limit will be equal to 4 so again the right hand limit is 4 and the left hand limit is 2 so they are not equal which means that f is not differentiable at the point a equal to 2 and that again mean means that it has many subgradients right so that's how we can determine if it has one or many subgradients if the graph were not given to us so here we have a question which says for a data set with 1000 data points and 50 features a tenfold cross validation will perform the validation of how many models right okay so first of all we need to know what a tenfold cross validation is right so let's denote the 1000 data points as d right let me write it as x1 up to x thousand in a tenfold cross validation what we do is that we divide d into 10 different subsets so or we can say you can say the we, we partition d into uh, disjoint subsets right so let's say d1 is x1 to x hundred right and then d2 is from x hundred and one to x 200 and so on and the last one which is d10 will be equal to x uh, 991 to x 1000 right so each of them ha has got 100 data points right so the di has cardinality equal to 100 each of them has got 100 data points right now so now we can observe now what happens in a tenfold cross validation is that we train the data set or we train the model using d1 up to d9 okay or let me write it as d1 union d2 up to union d9 
and evaluate on d10 right so what do you so first of all what is meant by we train the model on d1 up to d9 which means that we will use the points x1 to x990 right so we will use x1 up to x990 right so this will be the data set which is used to estimate the parameters right to estimate w hat right so that's what we mean when we say we train the model using a particular data set and evaluate on d10 which means that we will look at the loss function or the error right w hat xi minus yi squared i running from 1 to n will be 990 here right so we will get an error and this y hat is used from the data points x1 up to x90 right and this is this is okay so this uh, i'm sorry this should be instead of it should be 991 to 1000 right because we are evaluating it on d10 right so this is this would be so this is one part of the tenfold cross validation so we do the same thing so same thing will be done for will be done when what we what we we shall do is that we take d1 d2 up to d8 and then we don't take d9 we take d10 right and this is used to estimate the parameter w hat right and then we evaluate or we compute the loss function on d9 right so this thing will happen 10 times right so this process repeats how many times so first time we evaluate on d10 then we evaluate on d9 and so on so this whole process gets repeated 10 times right that is why it's called a tenfold uh, cross validation right and then for each di right for each di we get an evaluated error right so let me call that ei right so ei is obtained when uh, the loss function is evaluated on di right so this is what this so you get ei and then what we do is that we take the average of them right so 1 by n times summation of all ei so this is what we look at in order in order to uh, determine sometimes the hyperparameters or sometimes even to determine which model uh, would be a better fit if we are using multiple models right and so so how many times did we determine w hat right so that's the question so it will it will perform validation of how many models which means the loss function will be evaluated on how many models how many data sets right it will be evaluated on 10 different data sets right d1 up to d10 and then we take the average right so the answer will be 10 now in general you can say that so in general if you take a k fold cross validation it will it will perform validation so it will perform validation on k models right k different models right because each time you're getting a w hat using some data set it will be different right because you're using a different set of da data points okay so this is the general scenario so that is the answer to the question 10 so here the question says that we have a data set with again 1000 data points and 50 features and we keep 800 of the data for training and the remaining 20 percent for validation during k fold cross validation the k is not given we have to find k and how will we find that k so since it is given that 20% of the data is kept for validation which means that we will be dividing so this 20% will be actually 200 data points which is 20% of 1000 right so each di has 200 data points so I can say the cardinality of di is 200 for every i right and 
So uh, we can say that k will be nothing but the number of data points capital N divided by the cardinality of di, right? Which will be 1000 divided by 200, which is 5. So since k is equal to 5, the number of models which will be validated during cross validation will be equal to 5. So here we have a question which says for a data set with 1000 data points and 50 features how many models will be trained? So there are two types of question. One is how many models will be trained and the other one is how many models will be evaluated? Actually uh, both the questions are actually the same because the number of models which are trained are equal to the number of models which are evaluated, right? And this particular method of cross validation is a special case of, so this is a special case of k fold cross validation where k is nothing but n, right? which is the number of features. So k will be 1000, right? So since k is 1000, the number of models which will be evaluated will be equal to so the answer is 1000. So here we have a question which asks, which sort of compares what will be the mean squared error when the eigenvalues of x, x times x transpose and x times x transpose inverse uh, and it compares how it will differ as per the eigenvalues, right? So let's see what, so it asks the mean squared error of w hat ml. So the mean squared error of w hat ml, right, which is nothing but w hat ml minus w, right, norm squared, right, this is equal to uh, sigma square times the trace of xx transpose whole inverse, right, so this is transpose and this is inverse, right, so if the inverse exists or else we can replace the inverse by pseudo inverse, but it's not going to have much effect, right, it will be almost the same. So now, what we can do is that, so uh, for if you require a video on the proof of this, then can let me down in the comments below. Now, to start off, so what is sigma square? Sigma square is, so we start off by saying that the errors are normally distributed with mean zero and variance sigma square. So this is the sigma square that appears here, right? Now we have trace of xx transpose whole inverse. So we know that for any matrix, the trace is nothing but, so this is the mean squared error, MSE of W hat ML. And the trace is the sum of the eigenvalues, right? So this would be nothing but summation of lambda i, right? Where what, what is lambda i? Lambda i are eigenvalues of x, x transpose whole inverse, right? So when you increase lambda i, right? So when you increase lambda i, the mean squared error will also increase, right? Which means that the mean square will be small if the eigenvalues of x, x transpose inverse are small, right? So the last option is correct. Now we can also say using the result, so we have a result which says that if lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then 1 by lambda is an eigenvalue of A inverse, right? right? So this holds, right? Now one might ask what if uh, lambda is 0, right? See if lambda is 0 then A inverse does not exist, okay? So there's no question of eigenvalues of A inverse. So we can also write sig this as sigma square times, right, summation of 1 by mu i, right, where what is mu i? Mu i are eigenvalues of xx transpose, right. So now we can observe that when mu i is small, right, when mu i goes down, then the mean squared error will also, will go up, right. So the mean squared error is inversely proportional to eigenvalues of xx transpose. 
and the mean squared error is directly proportional to the eigenvalues of xx transpose inverse. So using this we can say that the third option is also correct. So here we are given the eigenvalues of a matrix A to be 2, 5 and 1, right? And they are asking for the eigenvalues of A inverse, right? So we know that if I take the reciprocal of, so if lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then we can say that 1 by lambda is an eigenvalue of A inverse, right? Also, we can say that if lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then lambda to the power k is an eigenvalue of A to the power k, right? Where k is some natural number, right? This is also true, right? The proof of uh, this result, the first one, let me call that R1, the proof of R1 is also straightforward. Proof of R1. So if lambda is an eigenvalue of A, what does that mean? That means that A times V is equal to lambda V for some vector V, right? For some vector V, right? Now, uh, since A is invertible, yeah, we can multiply by A on both sides and we'll get A inverse AV is equal to lambda times A inverse V. Again, lambda is a scalar, okay? Lambda is a scalar, which means it's either a real number or a complex number, okay? Not a vector. So we can take, take it out and write lambda times AV, which means, so A inverse A is I, so we can say V is equal to lambda times AV. Now that is same as saying 1 by lambda times V is equal to sorry, this should be A inverse, since we are multiplying by A inverse. So A inverse of V, now that means that A inverse of V is equal to 1 by lambda times V, right? Now this means that 1 by lambda, so this implies that 1 by, one by lambda is an eigenvalue of A inverse. Now using this result 1, we can say that the eigenvalues of A inverse are 1 by 2, 1 by 5 and 1, which is 0.5, 0.2 and 1.